Hello everyone, it's Metricode here and welcome to a brand new series that I'm going to be doing on my channel and I'm here today with Lemon Slice. How are you doing my friend? Hey, I'm doing good. Yeah, um, I'm a Minecraft builder and uh, I'm here to help, well, help you today get some, get some building abilities going, help you with some tips and tricks for building. Absolutely. So I have come up with a series idea which is going to benefit the viewers as well as me because one of my goals this year is to get insanely good at building. That's one thing I think my game lacks. I feel like I'm going to invite a bunch of other YouTubers on here to give their own building tips and advice and hopefully we can build somewhat of a portfolio for people to tune in and get better at building themselves because I know it's a lot of uh, people's weak points I'd probably say. Definitely. It's, uh, it's definitely the trickiest part and the Part that takes the most time out of any part of minecraft all right should we jump straight into it let's do it man so what i set up here is basically our demonstration of the the first part of building uh which is shape shape is like the most important part of building and the number one rule at least for houses and most builds is don't build with even numbers now obviously some parts of builds you know even numbers are fine but for the most part odd numbers are just a little bit easier to work with so right here our red example is just an even box it's just not it's not what you want to go for especially squares and boxes just try to avoid that man that's just not that's just not complicated at all. It's yeah. just boring looking. I completely agree with this. It's something I've integrated recently because it's it's actually a lot harder to detail because there isn't really a central point. If I wanted a door, I'd have to knock out those blocks uh, to have an even number for the door if I want it centered. Whereas if I had it an odd number, I could have a single line for the door. So yeah, I completely agree with that. And then over here, we have the, the green example, the good example. And uh, basically this is all odd numbers. And it, it looks a little bit more complicated, but basically all it is is we use odd numbers and we combine three shapes if we come over here to our third example we have the you know how we can see mm -hmm. all three shapes we basically have a t in the middle yep. and then on the end here we just have a little rounded circle here just to complicate things a little bit and in the back we have a tower which is always yep. something good to to add in your builds towers are huge so out of everything in terms of building how important would you say shapes are to a build shapes are probably the number one thing you need to be thinking about when you're starting a build strictly because Anything else you do to it really doesn't matter if it's just uh -huh. a boring rectangle or box. Okay. Yep. I completely agree. All right. Well, let's move on over here to our second topic we want to hit. And that is This block is going palettes. to be, yeah, build <laughs> log palette. And uh, yeah, I set up a couple examples here. Obviously, this is this is just a few that I threw together off the top of my head. But there's, uh -huh. is, there is a method to this. It may not look like it, but there is. For example, let's take this first one right here. What I usually do with my block palettes is I pick a base block that I want to use. A lot of times it's some form of stone or wood. So for this one, for example, we got stone bricks. Then I pick another block that we're going to use to go with it. Usually it's a block that has stair or slab variants. Mm -hmm. This time it's going to be spruce because then these two just look really good together. Lastly, this color on the top is usually an accent color, something I use for maybe the roof or just smaller parts of the build just to give a little color pop. And the copper is a really good one. Over here we have dark prismarine that's another good one yeah so what advice would you give to people because this is what i would want to know if i was watching this video right now what advice would you give to people if they was in their own survival worlds now and they wanted to go through the creative inventory and choose their color palettes for their own builds how what would you say to those the thing in survival is different though because when you start you really want to go for easy accessible blocks so it does end up being a lot of stone and wood mm -hmm. but Definitely the number one thing is don't use all one th or two blocks. It just gets really boring if you have an all wooden house. That's the number one. Yeah, completely agree with that. Here's a few examples. Obviously, there's there's so many more, but um, yeah, the method that I use for it is, is always the same. All right, we can swing over here to our third uh, setup right here. And uh, I think you can probably tell what this is showing. And uh, depth is what is being demonstrated here. Depth is like a, a huge part of building, especially houses. If you have a totally flat wall, it's just, it's not going to look I'm right. like this in real life as well. <laughs> I'm just like nodding. <laughs> yeah. Basically, the problem with a flat wall is that when you detail it, it looks okay, but it just, it just, something doesn't look right about it, especially if you compare it to things in real life. Nothing's really flat like this, where if, as over here, you just literally push and pull the wall in different directions and it, it just looks so much better. Absolutely. And the thing is with this, if I can just add my own twist to this real quick, is it's very easy to add detail. So like, I could add like some kind of like window feature or some kind of shelf that looks a bit more interesting. Or you could have just even like flower pots or flower beds and stuff in there. It just looks right. a lot more better and it adds more reason to add different things to it and make it look a bit different. Does that yeah, make sense? Of course. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes detailing a lot easier too if you have little slots to put things in. Well, basically depth is is just the key to making it look way more dynamic. And depth also can be color. Over here we have the, you know, we just variate the blocks a little bit and, you know, use some corner blocks, the logs and everything. And it that also can add depth. Another yep. thing, if you want to add depth, I know maybe not everybody's at this level, but there is uh, gradients. Gradients are a great way to, to add depth. I don't have an example here, but... Yeah, I mean, we can make an example for those that don't know if you want. We could do that. I could toss that together real quick. So another thing that I'd like to point out while we're getting the gradient set up is off our first point over there, as you can notice, this is all in even numbers. So you've got a three there. You can make this a five if you want to include the logs. You've got a five here as well, and you've also got a three, or if you include the logs, you've got a five. So that makes it a lot easier to have a central point for your detailing and having a central point for the door. Although it's not always necessary to build out of um, odd numbers, it's definitely so much easier when it comes to the detailing aspects of a build. So just a bonus tip here for uh, this part of the video. I, just, I was just editing the video then, and I realized there's something important that I kind of want to share with you guys that I figured out myself and doesn't get spoke about a lot. So you know sometimes when you see people doing this for planning walls. So the way to gauge this is if your block ends in or starts and ends in the same block as shown there, that is an odd number. If you see it start and end in different blocks, it is an even number. So if you wanna start planning your builds without necessarily double checking if it's right, you can use this method here to make sure that you get an odd numbered wall. So here we go, we got a little gradient. This uh, basically is a stone gradient. This is probably the most common type going from a darker gray to a white. And obviously we can extend this in different directions. If we wanna keep going, we could add quartz and snow blocks. And down here, we could extend it all the way down to black probably, you know, using black stone, deep slate, coal blocks, things like that. And this is uh, it's just an example of a gradient which you can use in large parts of your builds for more depth. Yep, and another thing to point out here that I don't think we've mentioned yet is the use of texture am i right so yes if you look at these stone blocks here he's mixed in some stone bricks and some andesite just some blocks that are around the same color just to add a bit of texture to it and it also adds a little bit of depth even though it's not physical depth in the terms of minecraft but it does make the wall look more interesting because if this segment here was all stone it would look a little bit plain and boring what we're calling this area is basically all the forms of detailing so you can see i took the same wall from over there and i built this house all the way around i built all four walls and mm -hmm. i added a roof and roofs are actually a really tricky part of houses but basically completely agree. broken down <laughs> it can be broken down into these three little sections right here we can take slabs and create a really really slow slope break like this right here yep and we can take stairs and do the classic you know stair trick right here yep and then you got this one too, the A-frame with a block in between the stairs. It's a little bit trickier, but this one we can extend even more. Like we can, uh, we, for example, we can take this and extend it even higher and do things like that. And that's how you basically create a roof. You just play with the height. It, it is a little bit tricky because I have actually done this in my own survival world. It's I think it's sort of playing with the types of slopes that you can use because sometimes when I've done roofs, I've gone far too high for the build. And then other times I've gone way too low. So is there a balance? Is there a way that we could sort of tell? Or is it just literally experimenting with the blocks and sort of testing different height variants? Or is it just, is there a little trick to this? Well, so when you're first starting, it's a lot of experimenting because you're trying to figure out how to even build a roof. But you can take this, for example, you can see the roof roughly goes just as high as the walls below it. So about half the build is the walls and half is the roof. And that's mm -hmm. a little bit high. I think this house probably could have done with a second level and then the roof on it. But uh, for the sake of the example, it still doesn't, it still looks correct. You don't yeah. want your roof being like twice as tall as your house though. That's when it gets a little bit excessive. But so basically what I've done with this roof is I've started out with the slabs in our first example, moved into the stairs, and then I moved into having a block in between the stairs so that it gives a really gradual sloping look. Yeah, yeah. So it starts off like quite slow and then it sort of goes up and more steep. Yeah. And like I said before, we can even, we can go crazier with this if we want to. We can extend these bits even higher and then connect it here and go even higher with this and just get crazy with it if you want to make it really tall and really steep. But obviously for this, it's it's kind of good where it's at. Oh, we have a visitor over here. Oh, hello. 
That's wonderful. Right here, basically all I've done for detailing is I've filled in some of the walls and I've uh, filled in the roof. One thing with roofs that I see a lot of people doing, what they'll do is they'll go straight across using either stairs or something instead of using full blocks. And it's okay to just use full blocks on the roof. You don't have to use stairs and slabs. So what I've done here is I've also, I have created a little bit of a gradient here. We've gone from the uh, slightly weathered copper to all the way up here with just the fully oxidized copper, which gives a cool effect. Yeah, and also texturing comes into this as well. So like, if you have a roof that's fully oxidized like this, throwing things like warped planks or warped stem or something like that in there, like strip wood, just to add a bit more color variation and make it look a little bit more interesting, I think that would uh, go quite nicely with that. Of course, yes. And a big thing with texturing is, well, if I just grab some warped wood right now, if I can just do a little example. Big thing is not just randomly placing it like this, adding in like little specks everywhere. What you really want to do is create kind of patches like this, like kind of almost veins of it in the, in the build like this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because that's way more realistic. Yeah, this is one mistake I make. I always, like when I texture, for example, if I texture a wall, I will, let me just go on the other side of the roof here. Uh, just imagine if this was like a wall. I would have probably put two here. I'd have probably gone one there and one there. And it just looks a bit weird. You are completely right with making veins of them and making it look like it's sort of connected together or adding patches of maybe three or four or even more right. if you really wanted to. So stuff like that could make it look really interesting. Obviously, it doesn't go well with this um, variant of the, the copper here. It definitely goes well with this one though. Um, but yeah, I definitely made that mistake and I will do my best hopefully to correct this in the future. <laughs> Breaking bad habits is a huge part of learning to build well as well. We can swing over here to our, our next version of, of this house. The house kind of just slowly develops as we uh, add details to it. This next example, basically all I've done here is textured the walls. I replaced some of the spruce planks with, uh, I added some stripped spruce wood in here as well. Mm -hmm. Just simple things like that. I like how you've done this as well, where you've changed the orientation of the wood. So it's got a bit of a different texture to it. Yeah, it, it definitely, you change little things like that. Like for example, right here, they're all facing the same direction. If we just take this one and switch it like that, uh -huh. a little bit different. So if anyone remembers, I actually did this in my Imperial SMP base, uh, the exact same sort of um, wood and texturing I used in that base. So that is a good example of how to texture a wall. And the same applies for any type of wall. So stone walls, you could even do it with copper walls if you really wanted to, any type of wall texturing is rather important. We have, uh, this is where we take kind of a big step. Basically what we've got here, I have um, a little list of all the things we've added here. So the first thing I did was obviously we, we tossed in the door, we put that in there. And uh, a, a little a little hack is when you have this door in here, just put an upside down stair above it, adds yep. again, depth, working with depth. And um, you know, we put some stairs here. The next thing we did was the uh, trap doors down here around the base of the pillars, makes it look really good. When you have big pillars like that, just yep. some trap doors around the base of that. I just tossed some stairs in here all over the place. We put some stairs under here. We put stairs, you know, alternating right here, as you can see, just make it look like some of this is being actually held up. And then we tossed some fence gates in between some of these fence gates are really cool for like right underneath where the roof is about to start. Like yep. what we have right here. I really like using those. And you can even once in a while replace one of these gates with a fence and add a lantern to it or something like that. That's how you can add. Yeah. Some natural looking lighting. And you could also open the gate to make it look like it's connected to the wall and holding it up. Whichever way tickles your fancy, I guess. The color of the wood is important because as you can see, even with these fence gates, they really kind of blend in. You can hardly even see them there. And especially if you open them, they're, they're basically invisible. But if I was to use spruce wood here instead of the dark oak, it would have just blended in too much and not looked good. Having this contrast is is what really makes the details pop out. So even using um, deep slate for this as an example, so like deep slate on the edge of the roof and deep slate across the side here, it's still the same principle. You're just using a different contrast. You can do it with pretty much any block, providing it's a different color to the main wall. And this is the, well, I guess the final evolution of this house. And um, basically we've, we've done a lot here. The first thing I did was add the windows. We got a couple different window examples. Right here we got just simple details. All I did was pop in the windows and then put an upside down stair on the top and the bottom. It's a yep. very simple one if you don't have a lot of space. Up here we have uh, probably the most complicated one. This is like a very, one of my favorite window tricks. You just alternate the stairs and then connect them with fences. Yep. And, um, that looks really nice. You could even replace this stair in the middle with a slab, and then you have room to put like a flower pot or a lantern or anything like that on there. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I like about this especially is it breaks up 
the sort of flatness between the windows so it adds a bit more depth to it as well we can go over here we have two more examples over here as well this one's basically the same thing we had on the front but it has a trap door on the top now the other thing you can add that's kind of a little less common and probably a little bit harder is you can add a little campfire like that Ooh, looks like pretty that. cool as a little uh, a little upper lip to the window and then this one right here it's kind of hard to see again because it's blending in but we surround the window with trap doors and that's a really cool looking one and then what are the other things we have this up here a little window sticking out of the roof now this is good for roofs you have to have some of these because you can't just have a totally flat roof you have to break it up a little bit these yeah. types of windows help a lot this is something I actually struggle with, to be honest, because like I see people do it in like their videos or if I'm watching like a stream or something and I see them just like rip part of the roof apart just to add this in. Is there any sort of easy tips maybe that you could give for people that are wanting to get better at maybe even the placement of these? Yeah, OK, so we can we can swing over to this side and I can do a little demonstration. Sure. So what I usually do is I try and I try and make it even. So let's say we want to have uh, maybe two on this side. So we'll find this this center block right here. We'll bring it up to maybe right there. We want that to be the center. Mm -hmm. And what I do is right here, we'll say, I guess this is going to be the window. So we will break this out and we'll put a pane there and a glass pane there. And then we'll just put a little pillar on either side of it like that. Yeah. And basically you have it almost all the way made. You just toss some stairs on. And then at the very top, you could either do another stair or just slabs across the top and something very simple like that. Oh, breaks so it's it just up as easy as that. All right. It is. And then you could obviously do this to make it look a little bit better. And then we could obviously copy this and do another one on the other side, like right here, even it up and breaks up the roof very nicely. I like it. And also the chimney here as well, which is uh, quite interesting. And this little trick you've used here with the uh, the trap doors and the campfire, I quite like. Yes, yes. This is, I do this in most of my houses because chimneys just look really nice. Basically, all you have to do is add a little chimney up, put it on a wall, and then cover the campfire with some trap doors of any type obviously and it looks really nice the other thing you can do is you can put another wall right there that, mm -hmm. that sometimes looks cool depending on um what you want in your build oh that does look nice actually it looks like it goes all the way through yeah yeah and obviously like we talked about before there's there's no texture in this so if we just add some different blocks in texture it up a little bit it makes it look a little bit better that looks much better. <laughs> it's it's right. amazing, isn't it? How much texturing just adds to a build. It I is. think it's a, I think it's one of the most underlooked parts of building, in my opinion, adding texture. Because like when I first started building, I never considered texture. I, I was one of those players years ago that I would build all my walls out of the same block, and I probably didn't even consider depth or anything. So all these tips here, I'm hoping, are very beneficial to a lot of people watching this. Yes, these are some of the, most of the time this type of tip right here like texture or depth they are things that people just totally overlook and don't even think about it until somebody points it out and then they're like oh i am i'm doing that wrong the final thing you could do is obviously add plant life this this build has no plant life there's no potted plants or lanterns even you can put those in but leaves are a great example you can what you want to do with leaves basically is you're going to just kind of droop them around like this yeah have them you know hanging very naturally looking on your build and obviously like we said, texture up the leaves, put some different different types in there. And that adds a lot to a build, especially if you're in the forest or something like that. It definitely it look like looks more interesting, long. for sure. Yeah, I, I love doing that. The final thing, the actual final thing, <laughs> is, is landscaping. That's like the number one thing. You have to make your build fit in its environment well. Like, obviously, this house looks totally out of place because it's just plopped down in a super flat world. Yeah. You have to do a lot of landscaping to make sure it fits where you're trying to put it. So is this like custom trees and paths leading up to it and all that yeah, kind of stuff or, and gardens yeah. and yeah, yeah. Putting it on elevation, adding trees, paths, you know, maybe a little yard with gates, fences, gardens, just make it look like it belongs instead of it just got dropped down there randomly. Yeah, I completely agree with that point. That's some. That's probably one of the things I struggle with. I, I don't think I get creative enough to add all the natural details and the terrain and the features and everything else. Like Even like a pond on the outside was surrounded by leaves or even like a little animal pen or adding a little balcony or something just to give right. it a bit more life. Yeah, I completely agree with that. And it's definitely, in my opinion, it's, it is on top of the texturing, another underlooked part, in my opinion. So that is everything that we wanted to cover. Am I right? I think so. Yep. So thank you all so much for watching this video. If you want more building tips and tricks, Lemon Slice actually posts quite a lot of them so if you if you're looking for more go and check out his channel it will be linked in the description go and drop him a sub he's a nice guy and i will uh, see you guys in the next video thank you all so much for watching and goodbye